प्रति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्न जेह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह घनश्याम महाराज नी जे हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जे Supreme Almighty, our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our utmost dear Puja Guruji, Puja Santo and all of you Bhaktos, Jai Swami Narayan. <clears throat> Bhagwan Swami Narayan gave us a very precious gift in the form of scriptures in the form of saints, in the form of devotees, in the form of this whole satsang. But out of all these gifts, there's one gift that remains etched forever in history and will always remain etched forever in history. And those are scriptures. A whole sampradaya or religion's foundation is based off of scripture or sastras. And from that perspective, scriptures are something that are very divine, alive, and always giving us some kind of focus and support. Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself verified some handful of scriptures in his time. But there are two, you can say, scriptures can, which cannot compare to anything else on this world. Extracted from the Vedas, extracted from the Purans, extracted from the Itihas, the Shikshapatri and the Vachnamrut are two scriptures which are an all-in-one master key if one can imbibe those principles and commandments in one's life. We're spotlighting the Vachnamrut today and the Vachnamrut is such a scripture which is the master key for all principles and from there, we can determine that there are certain different Vachnamruts that have certain kinds of different themes. Some talk about Subhaus, some talk about ego, anger, some talk about various different kinds of, you can say, natures of how God is. Some talk about attaining liberation in the easiest way, others talk about refuge and so on and so forth but particularly there are three Vachnamruts which are the heart we can say or which are the main you can say driving force of the Vachnamrut if these three are read then we would be able to completely grasp Bhagwan Swami Narayan's main principle and that is that is Vachnamrut Gudada first chapter first Vachnamrut Gadara middle chapter 13th Vachnamrut and Gadara last chapter 39th Vachnamrut. All these three Vachnamruts are you can say the heart and essence of the whole Vachnamrut because it comprises the most you can say fundamental and focal point that Bhagwan Swami Narayan is focusing on in throughout the whole Vachnamrut. Now from there, this Vachnamruk we're going to cover today is Gadada Middle Chapter 13th, and the title of this Vachnamruk is Divine Light. Now, this Vachnamruk is so special, is so 
you can say very very unique that by reading it one would be able to understand what Bhagwan wants us to become like what kind of level Bhagwan is talking from and how Bhagwan is exactly Bhagwan Swami Narayan actually gives us the deepest you can say secrets of his philosophy of his principles inside this very Vachnamrut this Vachnamrut has three segments to the, to it the first segment covers Bhagwan Swami Narayan's own stiti or state which he is in now there is no way to determine Bhagwan Swami Narayan's stiti or state but just to put things into perspective Bhagwan Swami Narayan still says it through words and gives us a, a sneak peek let's look at it that way in the middle of the Vachnamru Bhagwan Swami Narayan covers this form of God how it is and by meditating upon that form what happens and at the end of this Vachnamru Bhagwan Swami Narayan covers who this Bhagwan is is Purushottam the Supreme Lord of Lords these three segments are the most important and you can say most relevant but out of them we're going to take a look at the small points of each one so that it can happen let's move on to the next slide as we see here Gadada Middle Chapter 13 Divine Light we can also point out that our Puja Guruji is in such a state who is experiencing such kind of you can say greatness that we want to also take a sneak peek into Puja Guruji's life as well and see how and what state he's at through this Vachnamrut of course so this is a very long Vachnamrut so I'm just going to cover it with you with some main theme points and from there you'll be able to speculate and understand that Bhagwan Swami Narayan's overall philosophy is very deep isn't this, and is extracted from the greatest of the scriptures and put into the whole Vachnamrut especially this one the first and foremost main themes of this Vachnamrut points that I would like to cover is <clears throat> there's many but uh, decided to make things easy for all of you um, we would put it into this kind of uh, <clears throat> bullet point uh, kind of theme and go from there the first bullet point I thought was all of the attractive vishes and the repulsive vishes are the same to me now Bhagwan is talking about his state his you can state his natural state or what he's behaving like now we can never determine how Bhagwan is behaving or what he's behaving or what state he's at but he puts it into perspective for us humans and Bhagwan Swaminan says that the attractive vishes meaning all the worldly materialistic pleasures and the repulsive meaning all the worst for example a gold nugget versus uh, you can say a handful of dirt that is the same another example an old woman 90 years old and a young woman 25 years old all the same another example modernized a Mercedes Benz high-class car and a Toyota Camry all the same no offense to any of those <laughs> companies but this is just an example all these vishes are the same to me Bhagwan Swami Narayan states in this Vachnamru now think about it am I at that state do I have that particular kind of feeling in my heart how and how am I what are my natural inclinations if I'm eating <clears throat> simple food and if I see there is a warm pizza 
right in front of me or if I'm given warm pizza will I become engrossed inside of it will my mind be pulled towards there then this state is not for you we can definitely determine from this very statement what level we are at that's what Bhagwan Swaminarayan is stating in this watch number nonetheless in fact all of the attractive vishes and the repulsive vishes are the same to me also a king and a beggar are the same to me a king who may have thousands of villages at a state thousands and millions of you can say rubies and gold coins and diamonds at his feet thousands of people worshiping him and compared to someone who makes five dollars a day a beggar they're both the same this is the natural state Bhagwan is living at. This is his description that he is giving to us by his daya or karuna. Further, to rule all the realms and to beg for food carrying a broken begging bowl are the same to me. Ruling all 14 realms in this universe and begging for food are the same. Think about what kind of state this is. We cannot fathom. Just to put things into perspective, if we were given a kingdom with luxuries which we are not able to even fathom, thousands of people at our feet, they would do whatever we say, countless wealth, countless women, countless servants, countless mansions. And we were given this only for one year to indulge in. And then we had to go back to the very small apartment we lived in. What kind of feeling would we have? Would we remember that kingdom? Would we remember the luxuries? Would we remember and recall the individuals that served us? Would we re remember the mansions? then that state is not equal to us but such a person who has both equality towards that very fashion good and bad they do not remember when they're in a bad fashion they do not remember the good and when they're the good they do not remember the bad it's all the same this is the state even sitting with honor on an elephant and walking on foot are the same Elephant is the most, you can say, uh, luxurious way, especially in India right now, uh, not right now, but in that time, to travel or you can say be, be completely uh, honored by, even in a parade. And beyond that, if we compare it to just walking on foot, there is no comparison, right? An elephant's height is 12 feet plus, uh, and beyond that you're just walking but that's all the same Bhagwan Swaminarayan states all these kinds of different uh, states that he is um, he is at just for our knowledge and then he states only when I forcefully engage my vruttis in the vishes that they remain engaged in them meaning there is something that's pulling Bhagwan Swaminarayan back. They're really pulling Bhagwan Swaminarayan back. But Bhagwan Swaminarayan states that I look upon all these devotees as being equal. I do not differentiate one as being su superior and the another being inferior. And then he moves on and then he, s he states all these different levels. And then he states in this manner. It is only when I forcefully engage my vruttis in the vishes that they remain. So the question is, what is the cause of my, what is the cause of my behavior like this? What is it? What is the tree uh, trick? What is the magic trick? Well, it is because my indriyas vruttis. Now, got to break it down a little. Indriyas vruttis. Indriyas. There are indriyas meaning senses. <clears throat> we have a total of 10 senses and a mind which has four parts. Man, buddhi, chit, ahankar. 
Now, the Indriyas that Bhagavan Swaminarayan is especially talking about is the Gnan Indriyas. Gnan Indriyas meaning sight, smell, taste, touch, feel, you can say skin. These Indriyas are right now outwards, meaning when we look at some tasty food, we become indulged by it. When we look at something nice, we become attracted by it. When we hear something that we like, we become pulled by it. But the vrutti is meaning right now we're actually, suppose we're engaging in eating some food. Yes, we are picking up and eating it. But there's another, you can say, view from the inside that is conducting you to partake in that food. It's via the mind, which is a vrutti. It's, it's an invisible, you can say, it's an invisible force. Let's put it that way. Now this invisible force is going in five directions through these five canals. Let's put it that way. The eyes, the, this, uh, the, the nose, taste, skin, all these are the five canals, okay? Now from these five canals, these forces are going out. Now what is Bhagwan saying? My Indriyos Vruttis, these forces constantly remain inverted towards my Radai Akash. Radai Akash meaning, let's put Radai meaning heart and Akash meaning space. But inside our heart, inside of ourselves there is a soul. And the soul is bright, luminous, full of gnan, knowledge, forever, eternal. These are the characteristics of the soul or the atma. These vruttis or these forces do not, they're not outwards, but they remain inwards inside of the atma, the soul, which is full of light. In that radayakash, I see extremely luminous divine light. Just as during the monsoon season, clouds cover the entire sky, similarly, only the light pervades my heart. Admits that divine light, I see the extremely luminous form of God. This is the essence of this very Vachnamrut. The form is dark, but due to the in intensity of the light, it appears to be rather fair, not dark. The form has two arms and two legs, not four, eight, or thousand arms. Only two arms and two legs. Just like how we see Pyuda Gansha Maharaj here in this Siyasan, in our Atma, in Akshardham, this very Murti resides there. At this very state. The form has two, ar uh, the form has two arms and, not two, uh, and two legs, not four, eight, or thousand arms, and its appearance is very captivating. The form is very serene. It has a human form and it's appear it appears like a young teenager, as we can see. Sometimes the form in the divine light is seen standing, sometimes sitting, and at other times it is seen walking around. It is surrounded on all four sides by groups of muktos who are seated facing him and who are engrossed in looking at the form of God with a fixed gaze. I see that form in its incarnate form before me, before me at this very moment. Bhagwan is completely giving it all away. He's just saying it's me, but in an indirect fashion. Nonetheless, moreover, I am speaking to you while sitting there. In fact, I do not see this village of Gudra or even this veranda. I also see all of you sitting there, meaning it's an Akshar Dhamni Sabha. Bhagwan Swaminarayan is stating the most deepest of his secrets here in this Vachnamrut. Admits said divine light, I see that extremely luminous form. Whoever realizes his form, like me, will never be drawn towards the pleasures of this Vishes. Whoever understands and realizes this divine form will never be attracted towards any of the Vishes of the world. That uniform divine light is referred to as the Atma or the Brahm or Akshardham. And 
that divine form is Purushottam or Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself, we can say. Whoever meditates on the human form of that God sees the luminous divine form seated in Akshradham. Now, Bhagwan states many, many different sta uh, topics regarding this, but something he stamps down is that realize the form amidst that divine light is this Maharaj visible before you. If you cannot do that, at least realize Maharaj sees that form, sees that form which is amidst that admits that Aksharup light. Even if you cannot understand this much, you will be able to men you if you can understand this much, you will be able to maintain affection for me. As a result, you will attain ultimate liberation. So keep this principle, Bhagwan Swaminarayan says. A and then Bhagwan Swaminarayan also says in this divine Vachramrut that this God Himself is Purshottam, meaning the Supreme Lord of Lords. And from all from this Purushottam, all incarnations and avatars come out and all of them merge back in. Proving that he is Sarvopati and Supreme in this very Vachnamru. Indeed, this principle which I have revealed before you is the very essence of all the all the scriptures, and it is my own firm experience. I have talked to you he, to you having seen it with my very own eyes. Bhagwan Swaminarayan is kind of stamping it down. So this is the true identity of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. He is the Supreme Lord of Lords. <clears throat> Beyond all incarnations, deities, everything. There is no one that can even compare to him. Everyone is below him. But saying that, as a gift, Bhagwan Swaminarayan has given us this divine Vachnamrut. You can read the whole Vachnamrut. Uh, in a, in a, when you have some time but this will be covered in our UR course 5 <clears throat> moving on we would like to take a look at the Swami Nivato <clears throat> Sadhguru Shri Gunatitanan Swami a very very highly spiri spiritualized sadhu has given us this divine his divine talks in the form of Swami Nivato Comprised of approximately 954 watts. Sadhguru Shri Gunatitan Swami, Swami Shishya, Sadhguru Shri Balmukun Swami com composed this whole Swamini Vato and made a book from it so that thousands and thousands and millions of Mumukshus can benefit and attain Akshardham from reading this Vato. From there, for this course, we have extracted. Perkan 1, Vat number 73, which we would like to take a look at today. <clears throat> Maharaj said, So Swami Narayan Hare, Swami Narayan Hare, Sadguru Gunatitan, Swami in Vato, Swami states, Maharaj said, Think about one huge ship filled by 10 million boats, meaning a very big ship. Inside of that ship, 10 million boats. We want to fill 1,000 million such huge ships we want to grant moksha or liberation to that many jeeves so look at Bhagwan's vision Bhagwan Swami Narayan this was a vat that Gunatayan Swami probably heard from the mouth of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and then he stated it here and he is uh, he's talking about it here Bhagwan he's saying that Bhagwan, uh, uh, Bhagwan Swami is stating that think about it we want to fill this many boats and this many ships and we want to grant liberation to that many souls <clears throat> right now if we make a fist inside of this fist there are enough souls to fill up a whole universe a whole universe that's how minute the uh, soul is. That's how microscopic the soul is. There is no man-made tool or mechanism that can see and observe the soul. That's how small, even atom size, 
is big for the soul. That's how small the soul is. Yet, Bhagwan Swami Narayan's daya, compassionate nature, Bhagwan Swami Narayan is stating that want to grant liberation to all these souls. Meaning, he's saying everyone, but to put things into perspective for this human mind, he has to give an analogy of this world and he is giving it in the form of boats and ships. How can that many jivs attain moksha? How can that many souls attain liberation? Liberation meaning from this body, from this cycle of life and death, from becoming animals and organisms and, and, and trees and plants and so on and so forth. Bhagwan Swami Narayan wants to liberate each and every soul and take it to Akshardham and give each and every soul the bliss of his murti. That's what he wants to do. So how is that possible? What's what's the process? <clears throat> now moving on. Then I thought that those who have my darshan will attain moksha. For Bhagwan Swami Narayan, he's saying those who have my darshan will attain moksha. Again, I thought, how many jeeves will have my darshan? So those who have the darshan of my sadhus will also attain moksha. Meaning, there's only one Bhagwan. Compared to his sadhus, there may be 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Who knows exactly how many, but not more than 6,000. So those who have the darshan of my sadhus will also attain moksha. Again, I thought... Maharaj is saying, How many jeeves will have the darshan of my sadhus? Therefore, those who have the darshan of my satsangis, meaning devotees, will attain moksha. And those who feed my satsangis, those who eat from their hands, and those who serve them water, and those who drink water from their hands, I want to grant them, I want to grant moksha to all. Now, Bhagwan Swami Narayan's whole base, you can say, behind this vat, is pretty much that he wants to, some way, somehow, connect this soul with this satsang. May it be himself directly, may it be his sadhus, or may it be his satsangis, or may it be eating from the hands of his satsangis, or drinking water from the hands of the satsangis, in some way, somehow, he wants to grant liberation to each and every soul. That's all Bhagwan Swami Narayan is stating in this talk, but that's his kindness, that's his, you can say, uh, compassionate nature. And for us souls, our only role is to stay in the satsang, follow the shiksha putri, abide by the exact code of commandments according to our each dharma, and read the vachnamrut and understand Bhagwan Swami Narayan's principles and perform the samagam of a ekantik satpurush by man karma vachan and attain akshardham. That's all there is comprised to attain akshardham. There is no other method but to attach oneself to the ekantik satpurush. But Maharaj here is uh, stating that this is what he wants to do. So please get on my boat, please get on my ship and please get ready to attain my extra dham. That's all Bhagwan Swami Narayana is stating. And that's what Gunathya and Swami heard from Maharaj in that time. And he stated it in his vat here. Prakran 1, vat 73. <clears throat> Moving on to our last and final, you can say, uh, part of this Yuva Course 5 is a charitra of Mulji and Karsanji. Now, these two friends were from the village of Mankua, which is located in Gujarat. And they were, you can say, devotees of Bhagwan Swami Narayan somehow, somewhat. Now, in that time, Bhagwan Swami Narayan was seated in an assembly. And there was devotees, Santos seated there too. Now Krishnaji and Mulji went there and had the darshan of Maharaj. And Maharaj was in very, very happy mood and he decided to take a pair of scissors. Probably wondering why. Bhagwan Swami then takes a pair of scissors and he says, 
who wants to become my sadhu today i am ready to make whoever in this assembly wants to become a sadhu i am ready to make them the sadhu now the santos had nothing to lose they were already sadhus but those satsangis devotees who were sitting there slowly but surely they started to get up one by one thinking that i have to go water my farm <laughs> field the other one said i had to go feed my cows <laughs> one by one they start to get up because no one wants to become a sadhu but these two mumukshu atmas krishna ji and murli ji they sat in the assembly not only that but until the whole assembly dispersed they came close to maharaj and they said maharaj we want to become your sadhus we are waiting for the opportunity for you to tell us when will this happen and we want to do this maharaj knew but maharaj wanted to take an examination in the vachanamrut loya third bhagwan swami narayan first bhagwan anand swami and shivanand swami asks a question that what are the characteristics of a person who has faith in god coupled by the greatness uh by the great uh, by the knowledge of their greatness god and his son both what are the characteristics bhagwan swami narayan answers a, per, a person who has faith in god and his son cut pulled by the knowledge of their greatness what would he not do for them he would renounce his their his kingdom he would renounce his family he would renounce pleasures he would renounce public ridicule he would renounce his wife and his wife would renounce husband He'd be able to do anything and everything and then after stating this bhagwan swami narayan names hari bhaktos and santos and brahmacharis names mulji brahmacari muktu muktanand swami sammat patel from ahir kushal kaur bai a queen who had these kinds of characteristics that bhagwan swami narayan stated and bhagwan swami narayan also stated the names of krishna ji and mulji of the village of mankua who we are we are discussing about these two bhaktos names were etched forever in the vachanamrut and bhagwan swami narayan spoke through his mouth these two bhaktos names imagine how much rajipo imagine how much they won the hearts of maharaj the ekantik satpurush santo and bhakto so going back to the story <coughs> But one Swami Narayan said, "Doesn't work like that. I need you to go and take permission from your wives." In that time, Krishna Ji and Murli Ji were very young age, maybe nineteen twenty. But in that time, in that time of the eighteen hundreds, early eighteen hundreds, weddings, marriages were predetermined at a young age of thirteen, fourteen, and marriages were conducted around sixteen, seventeen years of age. So Krishna Ji and Murli Ji probably got married, and it has been probably a couple of years. So there was no kind of option; it was just kind of done by will. It was just done by destiny, you can say. Let's put it that way. <clears throat> Now, what had happened was that Bhagwan Swami said, "You have to go and get permission from your wives." Now, Krishna Ji and Murli Ji knew that their wives were very hard-headed. especially regarding this factor who would let their husband go at such a young age very very difficult to do so they went off they got up and went off and as they were going they thought how are we going to convince our wives that we want to become saints of bhagwan swami narayan what are we going to do they said that's okay let's just tell them so they break the news to their wives that you know we want to become sadhus we don't want to stay in sansar we don't you know we cannot stay in sansar please uh, you know let us go uh, we want to uh, take the code of brahmacharya and we want to uh, worship bhagwan swami narayan and you know pray to him please let us go 
they completely threw their idea out of the uh, water. They said, if you wanted to become saints, why did you come and marry us? Why did you, why do you want to disturb our lives? We want to get, we want to develop a family. We have this farm. We have this home. Why are you disturbing our life? What is the reason? Krishnaji and Muruji's mind was tied. They asked their minds very much. Hey mind, you still want to circle the cycle of life and death? Or do you want to attain Bhagwan Swami Narayan's divine Akshar Dham? Do you want to still become someone's father and someone's mother and someone's brother and someone's sister? Or do you want to attain the Rajipo of Bhagwan Swami Narayan? Hey mind, do you want to still enjoy the punchy shades of the world by eating tasty food and by indulging in the pleasure of the world? Or do you want to attain the Rajipo of Bhagwan Swami Narayan's heart? Hey mind, do you want to live in this world and die in this world without any kind of other, you can say, fruits? Or do you want to live for Bhagwan Swami Narayan and attain his Akshradham? What do you want to do? And they asked their mind and they tested their mind very much and they decided that this is what they wanted to do. So, even if their wives tried, their minds would not swaver. That's how strong and firm of a determination Krishnaji and Murji had. Nonetheless, their wives kicked them out. Said, we cannot have you do this. Again, they become very sad and they went back to Gadada and said, Maharaj, please make us your sadhus. Please, this is all we want to do. There is nothing else. Our mind is completely, completely determined and final that we want to do this. There is nothing else. However you keep us, you can have us sleep us on the floor. You can not eat. If you don't want to give us food, that's fine. We'll manage. You can keep us however you want. You can tell us harsh words. You can kick us out. You can do whatever you want to us, Maharaj, but please make us your sadhu. We want to attain ultimate liberation and go to your Akshardham. Yet, Maharaj said, did you get the permission letter that I asked for? Both of you? Maharaj, they're not even thinking about it. They told us to get out that we cannot do this. Maharaj said that you cannot stay here either. Go. So, for one year, Krishnaji and Murji worked and made 60 rupees and then came back again with 60 rupees and put it at the feet of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And from there, Bhagwan Swami Narayan says, Why are you here? What is the reason for your presence? Krishnaji and Murji said that we want to become your sadhus, Maharaj, and we have worked uh, for uh, one year and gotten these 60 rupees. Please accept this and make us your sadhu. Maharaj says, Maharaj quickly called their parsons. Said, kick these guys out immediately. Again, they went back home and tried again. Please, Maharaj, we want to become your sadhu or to the wives, please we want to become sadhus, please allow us to do so. The wives said that, is that why you married us? Is that why? What is the reason? What is the reason why you married us? And Krishnaji and Muruji got so frustrated. This is actually a story which is recorded this story is recorded in the history. Bhagwan Swaminarayan states it in the Vachnamut, these Bhaktos names, not because they renounced their wives, but what they did to renounce their wives. It is written that Krishnaji and Muraji cut off their genitals. They lived too, but they cut off their generals, genitals there, and the wives lost interest in them immediately. Because this whole world is composed of some kind of selfish motive. And the wives had a selfish motive from Krishnaji and Murji. And they did not care. And they said, get out now. Do not come back. Again, they go back to Maharaj. 
hold their hands to Maharaj. Maharaj, please make us your sadhu. Maharaj says, I've told you and why are you still here? But the thing to determine is Maharaj says, that, what has happened to you? Why are you walking like this? Krishnaji and Muruji said that we have done this and revealed to Maharaj we have cut off our genitals. And Maharaj became upset, called his parsids and said, kick these two guys out. And across the river Gela, they threw him on the other side. Krishnaji and Muruji did bhajan in the morning and nighttime, saying kirtans, remembered it, Bhagwan. And Bhagwan, while he was sleeping in the nighttime, could not fall asleep because these kirtans were disturbing him. He said, Who are singing these kirtans? Bhagwan Swamiran would ask Muruji Brahmachari, Bhagwan Swamiran would ask his parsads. Yet, Sparsas and Muruji Brahmachari would say it's those two guys that you threw out Krishnaji and Muruji those are the two that are keep singing one day goes by two days several days goes by and Maharaj says call them back call them back in an assembly there were santos and bhaktos <clears throat> Maharaj became so pleased they called both of them and they put Maharaj became so pleased at that time. Maharaj told the story to those santos and bhaktos present there for motivation. They Maharaj hugged both of them, put garlands around them, and gave them diksha initiation as saints of the Swamiran Sampradaya and named them Sarvagnanan Swami and Ganshamanan Swami. Maharaj made both of these saints it was just a test but such a rig rigorous test but that proves that those who have faith in God coupled with the knowledge of their greatness what can they not do for Bhagwan? now we don't have to do any of this we don't have to give up a kingdom we don't have to deal with any sort of public ridicule like they did we don't have to give up any kind of pleasures like we have any we don't have to do anything. All we have to do is give up natures that Bhagwan and his Ekantik Satpurush do not like. That's all we have to do. And by doing so, Akshardham is ours. By doing so, Bhagwan Swami Narayan and Ekantik Satpurush's Rajipo is ours. By doing so, the Rajipo of Santo and Bhakto is ours to take. We don't have kingdoms, we don't have pleasures, we don't have anything to give up. So it's not that hard. That's the point I'm trying to make. Krishnaji and Murji's case was the ultimate and highest case possible. But for us, it's just small things that Bhagwan doesn't like. Not doing puja, maybe skipping puja, not doing Tilak Chamlo in, in the public because we're scared of public ridicule. missing temple worship not performing the samagam of the akantik satpurush forgetting to read the vachna amrut and shiksha patri all these small mistakes that we make if we just correct them then bhagwan swaminarayan is just waiting for us bhagwan swaminarayan is just waiting to shower his blessings upon us all we have to do is just gather them and drink them but when we correct these small mistakes, not eating outside food, all these different mistakes, when we cover them, then Bhagwan Swaminarayan will become happy. His Ekantik Satpurush will become happy. His Santo and Bhakto will become happy. And then we would be able to attain Akshardham and go there and live there and reside there, our final home place. For many countless lives, we have been traveling throughout this cycle of life and death. Yet, no end how long ask your mind how long do you still want to travel how long do you want to become someone's mother someone's sister someone's brother someone's uncle how long do you still want to become insects organ organisms animals cows cattle how long do you want to still live in this cycle of life and death if you do then continue your way but if you don't if there is a voice inside saying 
I want to make this my last life, then it's time to take this path. Then it's time to take the path of Krishnaji and Murji, not even at the extreme state, but at a very low state. And when this happens, then automatically Bhagwan Swami Narayan is waiting to bestow his blessings upon us. So this is UR Course 5. We took a look at Kadrida Middle Chapter 13th Vachnamrut, Sadhguru Shri Gunatitan Swanivat, and this Divine Charitra. So from this, we'd be able to motivate our life, make it better, shape our spiritual life, and attain Akshradam. By the grace of Maharaj, <coughs> by the inspiration of our Puja Guruji, by the divine <coughs> blessings of the Santos and Bhaktos, your course continues and we will continue onwards. Another course will be conducted uh, in two weeks. Next week is a review week. If you need any of the courses, you please please be, feel free to email us at loyadamng at the rate gmail.com. The examination for your course English will be held in January, in January along with the Gujarati course and the dates will be determined in the future to come. Saying this, my humble Jai Swaminarayan.